Hey guys, today we're going to walk through Praxis and be guided by Thomas, the owner and founder, and he's going to show us around. So yeah, take us through, Tom. All right, well, here's the space. I haven't planned what I'm going to tell you, but this is where people come in. It's actually funny because we've got four different doors and it's always the last door that anyone comes to. It's like furthest from any, ent from any car park. So that's how we know that new people are coming because they try all the other doors. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you come in, go through. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so this is the space where we don't train. <laughs> uh, in the old studio, the smaller space that we were in, which was about half of the size of this total space, we had like maybe two meters of this is where we don't train mm. space, enough for a little pigeonhole area that was like a carpeted area that was clearly different, but there was no hanging out here until class starts kind of space. So I wanted to make sure we had somewhere where people could come in and not be training. And um, that's, why we, that's why we designed it this way. And I really love how it's demarcated, like where that floor starts. That, mm -hmm. That's where we start training. This is, <laughs> yeah. you know, we can do whatever we want here. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the practice space. No shoes on there unless there are clear exceptional circumstances that require shoes. Um, and we put this bent, like we put this in, actually, I put this in not really knowing why we would, why we, what we would use it for, mm. but I felt like having a nice big counter would somehow become useful at some point. Yeah. Um, so I put it in and like when we were in, when we were doing the fit out, people thought we were putting a bar in or something like they were wondering what was coming in here. Yeah. Um, but it's great. And it also gives me the ability to be like, I'm running a business, welcome, you know, and like I'm this person and you're on that side of the yeah, counter, yeah. which actually like somehow I think is reassuring for people mm. rather than you just walk in and it's like, hey, we're all here training with our shirts on, welcome, you know. So it's like an official thing and people check in here on the Take us through this iPad. beautiful sign because that really cool. pops out once you walk in. We actually had this sign made from by someone in Melbourne. Okay. Um, yeah, just because I had seen a sign around Canberra that I liked and asked them where, where they had it made. And this was up at the front of our old studio. This was the outdoor sign of our old studio. And it's gone through a couple of iterations because it started kind of falling apart. It was getting a lot of sun and rain. It was just completely exposed. So it used to be a different color. And then a couple of the guys, actually the guys who did this fit out for us, I'll talk about them after maybe. They um, sanded it back and oiled it up to protect it a little bit. And then when we moved, we're like, man, we have to, have, we have to keep the sign. I wanted to see if we could put it up outside but they've got stricter regulations here <laughs> so now it's here and i think it's i'm pretty stoked with that now we get the plants trying to take over that's the goal with the plants and in come, here. come over here because you can see the little book collection the which i'm library. sure that this is very considered yeah because you probably have a lot of books yeah so. yeah this is not random um and people borrow them this is our dewey decimal library system <laughs> where people just write down their name and the book they've borrowed and what the date is and I look there from time to time and I'm like, hey, man, it's been six months. Are you even reading that? <laughs> Have you lost it? But um, yeah, they're, they're books that I've chosen that I would, if someone said, hey, what should I read? That would provide some sort of a foundation for thinking about the things that I like to think about and that form, form a framework for why I do the practice I do here and how I approach them. Then these are a good set of books, a good set of books for that, for that purpose. And then, of course, different coffee-making implements that we actually use that aren't just for decoration <laughs> um, are here as well. So that's the front Otherwise, counter. when you come through, you know, there's this huge, big, open, beautiful space. Mm -hmm. And then other than that, your eyes are really attracted to what's on the boards, you uh -huh. know, which yeah. over here it says current projects, wildcard as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, so we're in the last three weeks of the year. Well, we just finished them this morning when we're filming this. Um, so we've been doing wildcard material in the, in the mobility and the strength classes and the handstand classes actually, whereas usually we would have a month long project. So maybe we'd be working on, uh, front splits and hanging in the mobility classes or single leg squats and plyometric jumping or balance of some degree, some sort in the lower body strength class. Um, and then Sosha and I put up our different movement practice projects and hers are always nice and, uh, nebulous things like energizing imagination <laughs> and presence. <laughs> I 
And then I ask her every couple of months, yeah. hey, has the project changed? Because it has unfolded in this kind of organic, really beautiful way. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it's different now. Um, rather than imagination, it's creativity. <laughs> and, <Yeah>. so, <laughs> and then mine will be, I mean, until you do the class, you don't really know what the project means. But yeah. <laughs> um, last previous projects were relaxation, floor work, um, tactical play at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And then, so we make our way to the, the space. You know, are there other zones to the space? Or it's just like you do whatever you need to do mm, within yeah. this? Not really, yeah. That's, um, and that's something that I think people are actually intimidated by, intimidated by when they come into a movement, a specific movement facility is like, well, what do I do? There's something scary about space. It's like the same fear you have when you're like, I don't have any plans this afternoon mm. and I'm on my own. <laughs> like, yeah. That's kind of scary. Um, you need structure. So people come in and I say, hey, just warm up, do whatever you want until they start and they just sit on their phones like waiting for the yeah. class to start because they don't know what to do with the space. But that's the main thing, right? You need actual space. Mm. Um, and all of us who are practicing this sort of stuff and not doing it in a dedicated movement space, we all feel the lack of space, mm. the need for space, right? So um, that for me was a big deal. One, Plenty of space. One thing I love is like this, this wooden floor, right? Because mm. you normally go to the gym. Now they've got that black mat type flooring, yeah. which isn't so nice sometimes on the bare, bare foot, quite hard mm. a, a, as well. But this has been really nice all weekend to be bouncing up and down, you know, doing yeah. all sorts of movements on, on this floor. Yeah. Yeah, the floor is a big one. Like I remember when we first moved into the, into the first studio, I hadn't had a place to train that had that sort of floor where you could roll around on the floor and move a lot through space and that it would provide the movement opportunities that you would want. Um, and I was super stoked on it because I was training in like a little, the little granny flat, the garage where I used to teach, taught for a few months out of, which was just carpeted and you could kind of make that work or go to the oval and make that work. But this floor is great for so many things and it's actual timber, which I like. Yeah. It's like, it's a bit, it's cheating a little bit because it's like a timber veneer. Yeah on top of cheap stuff, <laughs> but it's a real timber veneer. Yeah. So I like that, but it also makes it really easy to scratch. So in terms of zones, there's like nothing scratchable permitted on this floor. Cause mm. I'm, it's still new enough that I'm afraid of damaging it. So no shoes, no shoes, no, like don't bring the timber boxes out here. Don't bring the barbells out here. Mm -hmm. Um, which maybe is a silly rule that'll go away with time, but it hasn't yet. So I think I'd like to keep it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so this is the other sort of, uh, well, th this opens up. This is something that I really enjoyed this weekend as well yeah. because it makes this space like you're kind of training indoor, outdoor almost. Yeah, so we can fully open these doors and also the ones that we came in through. And there's also doors on the other side that can open. These open all the way out. I won't bother. Um, which is great because we don't, have, we don't have air conditioning in here. Mm. We've got two fans and doors <laughs> um, and then we just like in winter it gets quite cold in Canberra so if people are training at night then we'll close the doors and there's like a little bit of heat still in here in the next morning which mm. is actually kind of a nice feeling because yeah. um, often the nighttime crew doesn't train with the morning crew they're a separate group some there's some overlap but not much, not that much overlap um, so you get a bit of their body heat at least there's a transfer of <laughs> something there um, and we kind of use the we just use the doors to yeah. Okay, it's going to get hotter. Now we're going to close the doors and keep some of the cool air in and, and so on. And then over here, we just have some of the basic tools that people are familiar with in the movement kind of sphere. The tennis balls in here. Um, the sticks, which get used for everything, all those fantastic things. Resistance The hated bands. soccer ball. The hated soccer <laughs> ball, yeah. Single soccer ball donated by Marco, who was the first teacher at Praxis aside from me. Um, <laughs> He actually took some classes when we were in the garage <laughs> um, when I went away for, for a retreat. And then we've got this actually I'm really happy with, really proud of. We've got student folders. Um, so here, if I pull one out, which is actually mine, <laughs> um, it's a nice Praxis oh, folder. Beautiful. Yeah, and you open it up and then inside will be like a training, their training routine if they're in um, getting programming from us. I've got my class plans and that sort of thing. And then loose leaf sheets at the back for more planning and logging and whatever reflections people want decide to make and then we get a hole punch so you can just chuck whatever you want in there and these are these are great i mean some people don't use them mm. but lots of people do and i just want to create a context where it's easy for people yeah. to use to track because you want to track somehow even if it's just your reflections on the day yeah. or on the material or, or whatever so these are all 
members or yeah, these are all members you don't get one until you until you sign up. <laughs> and so lots of available wall space as well, which was used a lot dr during handstand practice uh -huh. in particular. Yeah. So I love this. I love that there's a continuation of, you know, we're not just on concrete walls either. It's yeah. like, it's, it's nice. There's something about that that I like, that like mm. feeling real materials mm. that is so often lacking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like that. And like, they're, they're, you know, they're a little bit sanded down and polished up but still there's some roughness and some yeah. like sharp edges here and there that you have to be careful for and like i do think it gives you a different feeling especially when you are barefoot and you're in contact with those things yeah um like these boxes for instance these are made of the wall from the old studio mm. <laughs> these these player boxes which is pretty cool and they're like a little bit wobbly and like rough and you gotta be a bit careful where you pick them up or where you put your feet but this was this was the old wall um, and now they've cool. had their boxes. Yeah, yeah I, quite, I quite like that. So we have the old sign and the old wall in, in the box form. Um, and then of course, you know, weights, barbells, if we're gonna use those, that's just all stacked in that. Could be more elegant storage solution over there, but it's not. And you can probably tell from the emphasis with how small this space is in right. comparison to this whole space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We use them a bit, not a lot. We use them in the lower body classes. Mm. And some people in their solo work are, are working on lifting and developing the, you know, the basic lifting mechanics. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly it's about, yeah, it's about space. Otherwise, I wanted you to run us through all these amazing monkey bars. So that's another really fun thing that as soon as I came here, I was like, uh -huh. oh, yeah, reach the monkey bars. I need to go <laughs> start swinging on it. Yeah. 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 Well, these were, um, I saw the... Um, Boulder Movement Co. I think they're calling, calling themselves Ape Co. Mm -hmm. in the States. I saw they had a nice monkey bar set up and just flicked an Instagram message saying, hey, what are the dimensions? Because um, I figured they thought it through. <laughs> so I just copied their dimensions. And then we went for the, the, the sidebars are a little thicker. So they're like the thickness of if you get thicker gymnastic rings, they're that thickness. And then these cross beams, they're a little narrower. Standard gymnastic rings thickness. So it's like 28 mil, 32 mil. Um, yeah, most people have to use chalk because of how they're finished and it's quite hard to... I had these old steel bars previously and you just tear a lot mm. with like raw steel. Yeah. But again, materials, it's nice to play around and I just want to make sure there's loads of hanging space. So in a strength class, because we have all the upper body class, because we have all the rings here, they all get lowered down and this area kind of just gets filled up with people. If they're doing their pulling work primarily, they'll be using this space and then pushing a bit more out in this space. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we do use, we do practice brachiation and different sorts of swinging and, and, and hanging and we make use of the bars a lot. Um, I like also that you can train under them no problem, like they're out, yeah. of, out of the way and we had to figure out how high, like how high is out of the way mm. <laughs> um, and also not so high that people are, because people are frightened, these are pretty high up. <laughs> yeah. So it's a thing for people to overcome and try to get to where they can jump up, if not use the boxes. Yeah. And how about this beautiful mural? Because that's definitely yeah. an eye catcher. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, this was painted by Erin Linsart. She's, um, she's also a musician, so she's got a little Instagram handle there, AOD Music. And she's, she's a student of ours. I asked, I was planning just to have this painted black. And then I thought, oh, I'll just ask Erin if she has any ideas. Mm. Um, would you like to paint a mural and she was like yeah there's a few things that I've kind of like played with after class or whatever that she was inspired by uh, and then she painted this over <laughs> like a month of eight hour days like it's it was a huge project really? for her and she'd never done something beyond the side of the size of a, of a, of a canvas wow um, yeah she's yeah. not done murals before this so that was amazing to see that unfold and to see her creative process because it was not the same like it wasn't planned mm. she had what she showed me was a sketch of the of the of the woman of the mm -hmm. figure uh, with with maybe not the whole serpent but parts of it and I was like all right <laughs> I basically once I said I'd like you to do a mural was happy for her to do something because she's practiced with us so she has some sense of what would be artistically meaningful and I don't know <laughs> I'm not an artist so is so there I a meaning be, behind this a story? I don't know I I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you look, like we could spend a whole day looking at this thing yeah, yeah. and like there's infinite 
an infinite degree of detail. It's insane. It's amazing, this thing. And I'm so happy that, that she painted this for us and so thankful for that because um, everything else, I like the aesthetic, the minimalist aesthetic, and that's my like style. It's black and then it's timber and then like that's it. That's, and then there's concrete and that's the thing. But this gives like whoo, life yeah. to it, um, which I couldn't have, I don't know how I would have come up with something. I think it's fit in really similar well. Or, yeah, yeah. So maybe let's come over to here, which is the other board, which I uh, think yeah. is really, really interesting because yeah, there's this concept of almost like levels mm -hmm. here and, and, and progression. So maybe yeah. take us through, yeah, why you've, why you've put what you've put up here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So if we come over here, if you want to come through on the side, we just have the progression of basically degrees of commitment to people's practice. Um, so someone comes in, they try a couple of classes, that's the newcomer level. Um, the newcomer stage, if they like it, then they buy a 12 class pack, that's the enthusiast stage. And that's like, maybe they come once or twice a week and try out the different classes and see what they think. Um, if they're enjoying that and they want to level up their commitment, they'll join as a member. So usually people will only do that if they're coming at least three times a week. And you know, we have members doing three classes a day. So there's a big spread in how much people are coming. And then beyond that, there's the practitioner program, which is where they're doing classes. And then they're also training outside of class with guidance from me. Um, so that's a more personalized, they'll have a program that they're following as well as doing their classes. Um, so it's just laid out there so people know if they want to go deeper, there are, those are the options. And then we have some milestones in the bent arm and straight arm strength and in the handstand classes. Um, partly we've just chosen these topics because they are things where you can put milestones, mm. you know, so it's important to acknowledge that just because it's measurable doesn't mean it's the only thing we do. <laughs> but why not measure the things that you can measure? Um, so these are big milestones for people like often people coming in, getting their first chin up is a huge deal and that's something they're aiming at, for instance, or muscle up is always a goal for people. <laughs> Almost everyone who comes through a strength <laughs> class wants to do a muscle up. Um, and then these bigger goals down, down the track, different milestones, the different how we structure our handstand classes is We'll set different milestones for people, different goals to achieve, and you achieve them, and then you're on to the next level, and you achieve those goals, and you're on mm. to the next. So are these the, the levels level. for the handstand? Because in the handstand class, I was saying, oh, level one, level two, level yes. three. Yeah, yeah, they're the levels, and I was reluctant to call them levels to begin with. Mm. They were just some progressions that I'd written out that I think would work. Mm. Um, but people started describing them in that way, and then you can see up here we have our to celebrate board, and we've put down, you know, who's achieved the next nice. <laughs> level in the different progressions. And there's some degree of personalization within the levels. If you've got a particular problem with letting the ribs are flaring out, we'll make little adjustments. But it, it became a necessity for tracking when you've got a large group of people for having, having a way to track their progress yeah. and for them to say, hey, I've achieved this goal and you know, okay, now it's time to go into new material rather than three different teachers trying to just go, I think this person's ready. You know, so we have something tangible yeah. to work with there. Yeah. Awesome. Well. I think that's the that's the space guys yeah so, i think that's it yeah it's been wonderful once again coming and visiting this this movement gym studio whatever you want to call it and this is what it's like when you're here so normally there'll be members out and about practicing in the background or there'll be a class happening so a lot of action and it's all yeah a lot of energy so yeah it's been amazing to to witness that thanks man yeah yeah, we love being here. I just wanted to try to design a space that I would love spending lots of time in because that was going to happen anyway. Um, and I think we've managed that. So. Awesome. Well, see you guys. <laughs>